You know, as I grow in my aesthetic, I feel like I'm just a hop, skip, and a jump away from being a TikTok e-boy, and I'm fine with that. Hello, welcome back to my story. If you did not know, my name is Harley Nouveau, and the purpose of this channel is to document my journey towards my North Star while hopefully helping you find yours along the way. So if that seems like the place for you, then subscribe to my channel and add your name to the storybook that is my life. In today's chapter, we're gonna tackle the next palette in our series of monochromatic nine pan palettes from ColourPop, of which there are exactly 3,862. Just kidding, I think there's like 18. Anyway, as you can tell from the title of this video and my face, it is going to be a neutral palette, specifically the Going Coconuts palette, of which everyone went coconuts over. I feel like I don't know many other brands that are as punny as ColourPop is, and I can't decide if that's something I enjoy or something that I really just don't like. As is standard for these makeup reviews, the way this is gonna work is I am gonna talk about the palette, my thoughts on it, show you some swatches, and really just break it down while you see me applying it in this area of the screen right here. So if you're someone that may have been on the fence about this and you wanna know if it's a happily ever after or a happily never after, keep on watching. Insert future title card here. As you can tell, looking at it, the outside is, of course, very coconut themed. It has some embossed foiled champagne gold coloring going on with the letters. And then on the back, of course, the different colors of which you can find inside the palette. Of course, this is just the box. So the actual palette is inside. It looks like this. Now you guys know at this point, I really am 100% over the nine pan monochromatic palette packaging. It's very Happy Meal toy. It's very cheap. And after seeing a few of their other nine pan palettes, specifically like the Frozen collection, I don't understand why they don't go the route of doing the cardboard, especially because the box, as always, is a lot cuter than the real thing. But I digress. According to the website, Go loco for this toasted neutral nine pan palette, perfect for your everyday look. This super wearable palette is cute, compact, and ready for any look. I hate that they ended both sentences on the same word. Looking at the palette, I mean, it's pretty run of the mill. I do like the typography specifically on it. It is your standard component. You got the mirror, you can see my desk. You got your different nine colors right here. As you can see, there are three metallics five mattes and one of those weird sequiny glitter matte shades. And they are as follows. Shredded, a creamy vanilla with silver pinpoints. Palm Reader, a white with gold flip. Colada, a cool taupe brown. Lovely Bunch, a mid-tone yellow brown. Cocoa Crush, an icy pale champagne. Shelia, a neutral ginger brown. Get Cracking, a cool brown with silver flecks. The Cocoa, an icy bronze with violet pinpoints, and Nutty, a deep umber. This palette does retail for $12, exactly like every other monochromatic palette. Looking at the swatches, you have that thing I talked about really enjoying whenever a palette has my skin tone as a transition shade. Also, looking at the swatches, you can tell that some swatch better than others. There were a few like this one and this one and this one that were a bit patchy. I've said before though, that I really don't think swatches are a very good indicator of the quality of the shadow because there are plenty of times I've swatched something and it looks amazing or horrible. And then in application, the exact opposite is true. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, there's a lot of glare happening. I can't do much about that. But what I can do is talk about this color story. And I know what you're thinking about that too. Harley, didn't you just say when you reviewed the brown sugar palette that you really hated brown neutral palettes? Yes, I did. If you remember correctly, and I might include the clip of me saying it, I also discussed how I really just don't like a warm brown story because I feel like it is the most basic, everyone does it. When it comes to something like brown, which is a more neutral tone, I would like it to be a little more diverse because if this had been three neutrals, three warms and three cools, I feel like it would have been a lot better. Not really exciting to me. I'm not the biggest fan of warm tones, which is weird because I'm a spring, so. Warm tones look good on me. What drew me to this, besides the fact that A, it's ColourPop, and B, everyone and their mother was raving about it, was that it was a neutral slash cool toned color story. And you know, I'm a sucker for a good cool toned color story. In the look that I'm putting on right here and that I have on my eyes right now, I stuck to these colors right here and then also these two. 
I have, of course, played around with this for multiple eye looks, but I've gotten a really good feel for how each color in here works, and I have some thoughts. First and foremost, on the color story as a whole, I really enjoy it. I feel like there's a good variety in that you have um, a more warm tone color, you have a more cool tone color, you have a neutral brown, the transition color is very light, you have a good amount of depth, and the different metallics are varied enough in tone that I don't feel like it's the same metallic three times with a slight shift. Even, believe it or not, I actually like the way that this one worked out because for the first time in ever, I noticed when I use it that I can still see some of the sparkle in the shadow. And as you know, every other time I've talked about one of those sequiny shades, I can't ever find any of the sparkle. It basically just blends out to be a straight up matte. I don't know if there's really anything I would change to this. For the most part, I am happy with every color as an individual. As far as to how they work, let me break it down for you. As you can see, this creamy vanilla color shredded is a really great transition shade. You might have seen me applying it. And on days where I've felt like not really having any makeup on, I've just popped this all over my lid and it looks beautiful. As far as Lovely Bunch, I really like that one as well. It's a nice neutral brown. It's great to add a little bit of coolness, a little bit of a contour without too much of a cool tone. So it's very in the middle, obviously, as neutral would imply. Get Cracking. Like I said, I actually really like the way that that worked. It really does read as like an in-between of these two right here, but with that sparkle to it. And the sparkle actually sticks this time, so I enjoyed that. For Palm Reader, I actually really like this. As you guys know, most of the very light metallics in these shades I'm not a fan of because I don't like the flip that they have. I really enjoyed that one. This one right here is also really beautiful. I feel like there's an element of rose gold to it whenever you blend it out. Da Coco is probably my least favorite, only because I'm not a big fan of that icy bronze color, but I do like it as part of the color story because it adds a little bit of variety. As far as Culotta, it's actually a pretty good contour color. I haven't tried using it to contour any other part of my face other than my eye, but it's a very nice cool tone brown. I really liked Shell Yeah because it's kind of a brown leaning brick color and it really broke up the monotony of this palette. And of course Nutty, which is a really deep umber and great for adding a little bit of depth and drama. Of the group, I do have a few favorites. My favorite matte is probably Shredded. Like I said, I really enjoy the coloration of it, especially on like your bare lid. I feel like it makes you look really youthful, really fresh. Coco Crush. Far and away, it's my favorite of the metallics because I really love that kind of icy rose gold champagne tint to it. Probably one of my favorite metallics that I've tried. Ironically, I don't think I really used it in this look today. And then a close third place would probably be Shell Yeah, just because I really liked that brick tone. So here's the thing. You guys have heard me say a couple different times now that the reason I keep buying these monochromatic palettes is because I've already started and I finished what I started. I already have pretty much everyone that's ever came out. So why give up now? Just keep the collection going. But I've also lodged criticism at the fact that there isn't a large variety of looks that one can achieve from the palettes with some few exceptions. I did think that Just My Luck has a good amount of variety, which you will get to see because that is the next one I'm going to do. And I really did like the way that Strawberry Shake played out. When it comes to the ability to do multiple different looks without looking too similar. I actually think this does a great job, which is where my biggest problem lied with the other brown palette, brown sugar, brown, brown. Everything red, very warm toned and similar. And a lot of the shades in practice weren't different enough or in depth or value to really add any sense of excitement at all. I could do three different colors every day in the same exact application and every single day it would probably look almost exactly the same. Having used this now a good five times, I really think that you get a good amount of variety in here. I do think that you can achieve different looks without having to worry about them reading too similar. Of course, they're gonna read more neutral cool tone, but they're not going to be, oh, you used the same color today that you used yesterday, even when you didn't. Does that make any sense? So I think that this one is really successful in that regard. If you're looking for a neutral palette in general that can be your everyday go-to, this is a really great option because you have a variety in here. You have cool, you have warm, you have neutral, and you have a good range of depth, you know, light, medium, dark, that you're missing in a lot of these ColourPop monochromatic palettes. In fact, as I was making this review and as I've been using this, I've been, I've struggled to find anything that I really just dislike 
overall that isn't a personal preference issue as opposed to a performance issue. Like I said, the only thing I disliked was this color, but that's because I'm not a fan of that color as opposed to how that color works. Similarly, if I had a really amazing chartreuse eyeshadow, I would still hate it because I hate chartreuse. As far as the overall performance, it's a ColourPop palette. It performs like any other ColourPop palette. The shadow quality of ColourPop is one that I personally enjoy. I know it's not for everybody, but I think it has one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas. And for the price point, can't really be beat in my opinion. So with all of that being said, I do have to give the ColourPop Cosmetics Going Coconuts Eyeshadow Palette a happily ever after. <laughs> Not that there was much competition, but I think that this is officially my favorite neutral palette. I actually enjoyed this one so much that I thought about getting the full like 35 pan bare necessities palette, but I'm still undecided. But yeah, if you want a monochromatic palette, if you want a neutral palette specifically, you don't want to break the bank, you want good performance, you want good variety, go pick it up. It's only $12. And that is all that she wrote in today's chapter. How did you feel about this palette if you tried it out? Or how did you feel about looking at this palette from this video or others? Sound off in the comments below because of course I would like to hear an opinion other than my own. It's kind of like an echo chamber in here, you know? Just me. With that chapter come to a close, as always, I am Harley Nouveau and I wish each of you every happiness until our stars next align.